Hi everyone, and welcome back to this introduction to Seaborn series. Today we're talking about the brand new Seaborn Disc Plot. The Disc Plot stands for Distribution Plot, and it's brand new to the Seaborn 0.11 version. The old way to create distribution plots in Seaborn was with something called the Dist Plot, and you may have seen my past video about that. But the dist plot is being retired, so in newer versions of Seaborn, you should either use the hist plot for histograms or the dist plot, which we'll talk about today. So the dist plot is still one distribution plot to rule them all. It still comes with a histogram, a KDE plot, a brand new ECDF plot, and you can add a rug plot to any of these. But the dist plot comes with some awesome new updates. For example, you can see the distribution of two variables at the same time, and you also have access to Seaborn's facet grid, which means you can split your data by a category and build small multiples. So with all of that said, let's go ahead and check out the coding basics of the Seaborn disk plot. So let's build a disk plot with Seaborn. By the way, all of the code I'm about to show you is available on my GitHub page. First, I'm going to import the Seaborn library, and I'm also going to load in some data from the Seaborn library itself. These data are all about cars, so each row of this data frame is about one particular car type. I'll set my Seaborn styling to be white, and now we're ready to build a disk plot. To do that, we reference the Seaborn library and the disk plot function. And now what we need to pass into disk plot is some column value for our x argument. So today we're going to plot out the weight of these cars. And then our data argument should reference the data frame that these data come from, which is cars. There we go. So here's our disk plot. So a couple things to notice about this default behavior of the disk plot. For starters, I've taken all of my cars' weights, bend them up, and created a histogram. So this gives me a rough estimation of the distribution of this variable. One other thing to note is that the default behavior of the previous dist plot had a histogram like this, but also a KDE line on top of it. That is no longer the default here, we just have the histogram. If you would like to add that KDE line back in, you can do that easily enough by setting this KDE argument to be true. Now this is going to give you something that looks almost exactly like the previous default for the old dist plot. Another thing that's brand new in the dist plot is that we now have access to this argument called kind. So what this will do is switch over the type of distribution plot that we're creating. Right now we have a histogram, but I can reference this kind argument and switch this over to a KDE plot instead. Your third option with the disk plot is called an ECDF plot. So let's go ahead and produce that. We switch kind over to ECDF. This is called an empirical cumulative distribution function. Basically, it's trying to replicate the cumulative distribution function by adding up all of the different values it sees as it moves across this weight variable. So let's say right here at about 3,500, we have roughly 70% of the values already seen. This tells me my proportion right here. And by the time I get to 5,000, I've seen all of the cars, so I have 100% of my data accounted for. Now, if you're familiar with the old dist plot, you may remember that you could add a rug plot to any of these figures. And the same is true here. So to add a rug plot to your dist plots, you can just reference the rug argument and set that equal to true. And there we'll see the rug plot along the bottom. Sometimes, especially if you have fewer data points, this helps you get a sense of exactly where points are falling along this x dimension. If you know about other Seaborn plots, you're probably familiar with this argument called hue, and so we're going to be able to use that in disk plot as well now. For the hue argument, we'll reference one of the columns in the car's data frame. Let's do the origin. And the way this works, it will show off categorical variables by assigning one color to each category in the origin column. So in that column, I have US, Japanese, and European cars. And here I'm seeing one different color for each of those on my histogram. This is actually a little difficult to see because a lot of those colors are overlapping at this lower weight region. So we might decide that a KDE plot is better to show off this relationship if we switch kind back over to KDE and now still set Q to be equal to the origin. Now it's much easier to see the different distributions of weights for each of these three different regions. As I mentioned in the beginning of this video, the disk plot allows you to plot two variables at once which is called its bivariate or two-dimensional option. 
Let's check that out in the Seaborn code. Okay, so let's try to plot out two variables on our disk plot. Right now we have the weight on the x-axis, but we could also add something like the horsepower on the y-axis. And there we'll see a two-dimensional histogram. So the way this works, it's kind of like a heat map, and we have darker colors representing areas of larger density. So that means there are a lot of cars with weight around 2,000 that have horsepower around 70. Lots of cars down here, fewer cars up here in the light blue regions. And this bivariate representation of the disk plot also supports switching over to the KDE plot. So this is more representing contour lines of density, where we have a really high density here, and then another group of cars up here as well. And just keep in mind that even with these two-dimensional plots, you oftentimes have access to the previous arguments we just talked about. For example, I could add a rug plot to this bivariate KDE plot, and now this is kind of starting to look like a joint plot, because I can see each marginal distribution on each of these axes. One major update to the Seaborn disk plot is that it now leverages the Seaborn facet grid. Like the cat plot or the rel plot, we can now create small multiples with the Seaborn disk plot. So let's check out the facet grid options within disk plot. Remember this figure from before where I said it wasn't super awesome because all of the colors are overlapping down here. So what we can do instead is to create one small multiple for each of these different origins. So the way we're going to do that is to reference this call argument, which stands for column, and then pass in the origin column. This creates one small multiple for each of those different origins, and now we can see the distributions for each much more clearly. Cars from the United States are kind of running the gamut, whereas cars from Japan and Europe are much lighter. This was a huge update to the disk plot, and I think it's added a lot of nice functionality and will come in very handy. And the other cool thing is that even with these facets, you can still switch back over to, let's say, the KDE plot if you'd prefer and maybe even decide that you want to add a rug plot to each of these facets, that's also possible. You're able to do a lot with a very little amount of code. One final thing I wanted to demo about this, we've been using columns so far, but you also have the option to switch over to rows. So let's try that as well, and we can even use a different column in our data frame. So let's switch this to cylinders. There's actually several different types of cylinder cars in this data frame, so I'm actually going to filter down my data frame to make sure that I'm only pulling in cylinders that are four, six, or eight. And one more additional styling update. Let's go ahead and switch our hue over to cylinders as well. This is really just for aesthetics. All right, so here's what's happened. Each of the columns still represents each different region or origin that's coming from this part, but now we also have that each row will represent a different cylinder amount. So this first row is four cylinder cars, then we have six cylinder cars, and then finally eight cylinder cars. And you can see that only the US has eight cylinder cars in this data set. So what we saw before about the US having weights all over the place, it's actually because the US was producing four, six, and eight cylinder cars, whereas the Japanese and European cars in this data set were mostly four cylinder cars, and therefore on the lighter side. Like Seaborn's other plots, the disk plot comes with many different styling options, so let's see a few of those. First up, if you don't like the colors that are being shown on a plot like this one, you can switch your palette. So there's lots and lots of different palette options. I'll choose the one called Crest but you can match these colors to whatever looks appropriate for your project. Another argument that works on all kinds of disk plots is the argument height. So right now our default height is five, but let's say that you'd like to make this figure smaller. You can just decrease this number to let's say two. Now we've got a much tinier figure. So this is a nice way to update the figure size without needing to go through something like matplotlib. Another argument that you can adjust here as far as the figure size is called aspect. So aspect measures the width divided by the height. The default is one, but here we've increased that to 1.5. So now our figures are wider than they are tall. The other styling properties that you can pass through to the disk plot will go directly to whatever kind of plot you've created. So right now we have a hist plot. Any other styling I want to do can come from the hist plot styling. So for example, if I want to change the number of bins in my histogram, I could reference the bins argument, and let's say set that to 20. So all of these keywords come from whatever the underlying figure is. Bins is a keyword for hist plot, so it works here too. Or let's say that we're working with a KDE plot. One of my favorite arguments for KDE plots is called fill. 
and I can switch this to true. And it'll just kind of fill in underneath that line. We also have the option to change the line width. Let's increase that to three. Any of these extra arguments here are just going to the KDE plot. If you've included a rug plot here below and you want to style that rug plot, there's a separate argument called rug keywords, and this accepts a dictionary. So any kind of keywords you want to pass here, the keyword itself should be the key. So let's say the height. And we can increase that if we'd like. So let's say 0.05. Now we've got a taller rug plot going across our x-axis. You could also update things like color here as well. And because the Seaborn disk plot leverages the facet grid, you can also style many of the options that relate to the facet grid. Like the rug keywords, there's also something called facet keywords within this function, and this also accepts a dictionary. The keywords used here should be coming from the facet grid, so there is one keyword called despine, and currently that's a default of true, but we could set that to be false if we'd like. That creates a little box around each of these different facets. Like the cat plot and the rel plot, the dis plot also returns an object, and so let's call it g, G is actually a facet grid object. So if we check the type of G, that's a facet grid. What that means is we can actually apply methods to G and change how our facet grid works. So let's see an example of that. This facet grid object actually has many properties and many different methods available. So let's try out one of those now. There's a property in here called axes dict. And what we're going to do is actually get the items of this dictionary. And let's print those out. So you can see what this is. This is actually each of those different categories in the origin column, USA, Japan, and Europe, and we're actually able to grab the axis subplots from this dictionary. So what that means is we can actually use these to adjust individual subplots later. So here I'm creating the same disk plot that we used before, and I'm saving its facet grid as G. Then we're going to be cycling over the column values and axes in that axes dict items. So remember that the column values are USA, Japan, and Europe, and then the axes are the individual subplots. So what this code does is looks to see whenever that column value is Europe, I want to set the face color of that subplot to be light blue. So let's check it out. And there we go. Our European subplot is light blue and the other two are still white. So this is really, really powerful. If you want to change one thing about a particular subplot, you could just cycle over the axes dictionary object. So the disk plot is Seaborn's updated distribution plot. You'll get access to various different types of plots like histograms and KDEs, and you'll also have access to Seaborn's facet grid for creating small multiples. If you find yourself in a situation where you really just need a basic histogram, you can also check out Seaborn's hist plot for that option as well. Thanks so much, and I'll see you next time.